1977, a small factory in Colvin Leicester got to work on something that would change the lives of countless people. Little did they realise that people were still care enough 40 years later to sit and listen to a guy waffle on about that product. This is the Star Wars Toy Podcast. Hello there, welcome to episode 14 of the Star Wars Toy Podcast. I'm your host, Darth Mac, and on today's show I'm going to be talking about the Hasbro reveals that you might have seen for Triple Force Friday. But before that, as always, we have this. The Star Wars Tracker Report. This week's Star Wars Tracker is going to start with a little note from Jared. Uh, it's a little bit about grading, which is quite interesting, so I'll read that out first. Graded items, labels, e.g. AFA, UKG and CAS have a special description language, with overall grade, subgrades, English mnemonics such as NM, near mint, and more. One of the less seen adornments is a Q grade, being short for qualified. This is mostly seen with items that have a box and other pieces like instructions and other paperwork. It basically means that all the various bits and pieces that came with the item at retail are present and accounted for. It's not a mint in sealed box MISB item because it's been opened but this Q grade allows it to stand out from other loose graded items. One such example tops the accessory tables this week, a nice Empire Strikes Back TIE Fighter with a AFA Q85 grade. So as always, I'm going to stop, start with the top 5 accessories. Uh, number 5 we have a B-Wing Fighter UK G80, Kenner, loose, sold in the United Kingdom for £257. Uh, number 4, a Millennium Falcon diecast, a Kenner Star Wars C bubble box. So in the United States, $456. And number three, we have a Tatooine skiff. Very nice. Kenner, Power of the Force A, Tatooine scene. Sold in the United Kingdom for £500. And number two, we have an IG-88 12-inch AFA-70. Kenner, Empire Strikes It, back A. Only one known version of the packaging. Sold in the United States for $936. At number one, we have the the Imperial TIE Fighter, as far mentioned, AFA Q85. Empire Strikes Back A Imperial TIE Fighter title, sold in the United States, $1,060. On to the top five loose figures now. At number five, we have a Han Solo in Carbonite Chamber, UKG85 Kenner, sold in the Attic Kingdom for £125. At number 4 we have a Jawa Cloth Cape AFA 85, Kenner, sold in the United States, $463. Number 3 we have a Lando Calrissian, General Pilot AFA 85 Plus, Kenner, sold in the United States, for $206. At number 2 we have a pop up lightsaber R2D2, Kenner again, and sold in the United States for $294. But number one, we have a Boba Fett. Yes, Boba Fett tax rises its head again. Try logo version this time, a UK G85. Kenner version, even though it's a try logo, that's a bit strange. But it was sold in the United Kingdom for £330. And finally, on to the top five mock figures. At number five, Han Solo, large head, UK G85. Kenner, Return of the Jedi 65A, sold in the UK. For £650. At number 4, we have Imperial Star Stormtrooper, UKG 75, a Takara Star Wars 12B, sold in the United Kingdom for £658. At number 3, we have an Emperor's Royal Guard, AFA 75. It's a PBP this time, Return of the Jedi 65A, again sold in the United Kingdom for £770. Number 2, we have a Boba Fett, AFA 75. Kenner, Empire Strikes Back, 48C, sold in the United States, for £1,525. But at number one, we have a Luke Skywalker fanboy, yellow hair, AFA 80, uh, Kenner, Star Wars 12A card, sold in the United States, for £2,275. 
As always, you can get your own Star Wars tracker at www.starwarstracker.com. Any for your thoughts? Hi, I'm Kelly Marie Tran. And I'm Naomi Aki. We are so excited for the global reveal of our products across the Star Wars galaxy. Tune in and don't miss out. So if you're interested in the Star Wars ties, and you, you probably will be if you're listening to this podcast, you will have watched the Triple Force Friday reveal of... Uh, not all of the figures that are coming out, unfortunately, but uh, they didn't show them quite enough. But just the reactions of the actors themselves. This was really good. Um, <laughs> a bit about what he not looking at the camera <laughs> that really tickled me. But then again, he's uh, an actor, so he's not meant to look at the camera. The reactions did seem natural, especially Gino Carano's and Billy D. Williams. And we did find out some interesting new characters that we didn't know about, especially the character that was revealed in the Lego Millennium Falcon and the little character that comes with the Black Series 3PO. The sculpts do look pretty amazing on those Black Series. Uh, Jason Ridley seemed to be very pleased with hers, but um, Oscar Isaac wasn't very chuffed with his. I don't suppose he will be. They'll never get his first right. The one thing I do like about this new line of Black Series figures, uh, they didn't actually show it on the reveals, but is the colouring and the packaging. Yes, it's called the Black Series, and the, the packaging's always been black, but we're getting red, white, all different colours now. I do believe the white ones are going to be the first editions, because the Cal Casting one is uh, white, but to the second sister, you can get in black and white. The First Order Stormtrooper and Jet Troopers are in white packaging. And even Kylo's in a white box. You can also get the Sith Trooper in a white box, but you can also get in a red box, which is really cool. And it looks a bit more chrome than the normal version, which I'm going to look out for that. But the one I'm really looking forward to, which is in like a gold, gold chrome brown box whatever you want to call it he's the mandalorian himself and i don't think those will be on the shelves very long you can also get it in a white box as well but i would prefer that goldy box and speaking of the mandalorian we're also getting an atst raider in uh, what looks like a vintage collection box uh it does say the mandalorian on it and that looks so cool something they did show is the uh, five inch versions of the dolls the cartoony versions a bit like the toy box versions and i dissed them at the beginning but um i think they look pretty cool actually i think they're aimed at the younger version the younger people but uh, they do look really detailed and i do hope they do very well one thing we saw that i know won't do very well i don't like them at all myself um the gold versions of the black series figures no, they've just got excess stock and they've just painted them gold and shoved them in a uh, in a bubble. But look of it, I've seen these. I've seen the Darth Vader one of these Stormtrooper one, and even Anthony Daniel's face when he saw the uh, the three PO, the BB eight, and the R two D T wasn't very impressed. You could tell uh, these will be on reduction very quickly. As for the Lego reveals, we've got. An A-Wing with a snap wax lane. I don't know how he's fit into it. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Greg. The Y-Wing looks pretty cool. The Persana Speeder Chase with the Jet Troopers. The Mandalorian ATST, which looks like it belongs to the uh, Bounty Hunters group. Of course, we've got a Millennium Falcon, but it does look like a smaller, simplified version. Maybe it's going to be hun- under £100 this time. But the thing that impressed me the most, which was very surprising, was the Dio interactive droid. Yes, we've had the BB-8 and we've had the R2-D2. They were from Sphero. They weren't that popular. Well, they were probably pretty popular, but they didn't last long. But this um, this Dio seems different. I don't know why. It's just like they were saying, the engineering of it is just amazing. And it's, it's made by Hasbro this time, so that's uh, one reason why you might get more play value out of this. And of course, all the retail values are yet to be confirmed on any of these products. But you know your Black Sea is going to be about twenty, twenty-two pound, twenty-five pound, something like that. Even Billy D. Williams were asking how much that Lego Millennium Falcon was going to be. 
So there you go, just a little look at the reveals. Uh, I'm hoping that next week I'm going to have a crossover event with somebody we talked to a few weeks ago. A great guy by the name of John Adams. You may know him as the favourite Star Wars figure guy or the awesome geek show guy. And what we're going to do, I'm going to be on his podcast and he's going to be on my podcast talking about the figures that are coming out and all the toys that are coming out. And what we actually pick up from his point of view from the US and from our point of view in the UK. So that should be quite interesting. And I've been in touch with Smith's Toys to see if they're doing a Triple Force Friday event. I've had no reply as yet, but I'll keep you updated on that. Hopefully I'll get a podcast out before it all kicks off. Maybe I'll do a mini podcast before next Friday, or if you just keep an eye out on my Twitter, at Star Wars Toy Pod, and I will try and keep you updated. Somebody once told me the world is gonna grow me. I hate to this girl in the shed. No, the show's not over. You're not getting out of here that easy. I just fancied a bit of a change up this week. And something I used to do on the old podcast is have a how to collect section. Uh, I thought about it and I think what I'm going to talk about this week is where to buy your uh, vintage items. We obviously know where to buy modern. You can get go to the entertainer and get them really cheap at the moment. I know I mention them every week. But the vintage, I think it might be best to go through a few different avenues of uh, collecting those vintage figures and play sets and vehicles and I'll go through with you with the pros and cons of buying in different areas but of course as I've always said before you start buying do your research buy a book first buy a Star Wars vintage book any of ones I've uh, I've talked about before if you go to my YouTube channel I reviewed quite a few you don't have to get the Killerman <laughs> that's going to cost you Three hundred pound, two hundred to three hundred pound. So I wouldn't start with that. You just start with the um, the five to ten pound versions. Just the just the little guides. Uh, I've I used the one for years from two thousand and five. Yes, the prices are wrong, but use that in conjunction with the Star Wars tracker. And I big that up big style because I use that. I've used that. I used it this week actually, uh, valuing some things. So that is something that i always use but you need something to uh, guide you to some make sure you don't get ripped off basically listen to these podcasts as well there's mine and there's the vintage rebellion the that one's just come out this month uh that's they're very knowledgeable very very knowledgeable and they're going for about six hours per month so talking just about vintage star wars i just i talk about all star wars toys they talk about just vintage and i wish i could just talk about vintage but i don't because a lot of people collect modern as well, and there's a lot more going on with the modern, obviously. Not to say there's nothing, not a lot going on with the uh, vintage. There are, there's always something to talk about vintage. It go for on forever and ever talking about vintage, as we are now. So the first place to buy vintage is um, eBay. Yeah, eBay. Pros and cons. Your pros, you're going to have collectors from all around the world sellers from all around the world you can get more or less anything you want on that eBay on T-Bay. and um you can get a bargain now and again some of most of the prices are ridiculously high and they see star wars and they think they're going to get rich but majority of them are going to be um dealers a lot of some collectors go on there to sell the collection to try and buy something different but uh, a lot of dealers on there and they generally know what they're talking about and they will nearly always put that if it's a, a reproduction weapon they well they've got to list it as a, if it's a reproduction they've got to list it as reproduction or else they'll be in a lot of trouble uh, you will all, always find reproduction on there Stay away from it. If you're going to be a proper collector, stay away from it. Avoid it like the plague. It's difficult sometimes because there are so much, so much reproduction on there. Even the boxes. I was looking today. Somebody was wanting a um, Ewok Village box. Just a box. And there was 
reproduction boxes and you can get you can get a proper one for the same price as you buy the reproduction one so i just don't understand but uh yeah stay away from reproduction similar with customs i don't like customs to be honest with you a lot of people do but i don't there is one custom maker that's getting a big name for himself i'm not going to mention it because i don't want to give him the uh, publicity to be honest with you but let's just say the uh, junk man uh retro blasting talk about him quite a bit which is unfortunate i know retro blasting do do a lot of um cleaning up and uh, repairing of things fair enough that's uh that's not too bad it's just when you get the customs which are copies and they are reproductions and this sh i'm not going to say they shouldn't be allowed because they're going to be you're always going to get it but uh i'm i stay away from it as a proper collector stay away from it as i said before i'd rather not have it than have a fake version of it so on ebay i have a couple of safe searches one is vintage star wars and one is vintage star wars mocks um vintage star wars can <laughs> can create problems because you're going to get the vintage collection as well and it can catch you out it catches me out every so often but you just you've got to look at the figure uh, and if it's got more more than five poa that's points of articulation by the way that means that it's just the head and the arms and the legs move with the vintage collection you're going to have the ankles and the wrists and everything else that moves but the car backs look very similar to the originals another thing you'll get with searching for vintage star wars is a lot of uh, people don't realize that the power of the force 2 line is not vintage uh, you'll get a lot of that too again it's something you're just gonna have to read up about it very quickly comes clear which is i want to say well, modern compared to vintage but then again you might want to get some of those power of the force 2 uh, figures in the characters like the tarkin or the slave layer that never got produced on the vintage line you might want to put them in your collection that's totally up to you but as we're talking vintage we'll stick with vintage and try and get them complete i've told you this before so you need to try and get them complete because trying to find those blasters or the weapons that aren't repro are going to be a lot harder as i say these sellers usually tell you that uh, if they're repro or not or they're original and if it doesn't say ask just ask them send them a message and say look is it original another thing with ebay is getting it delivered is if you don't live close to buy to them uh again if the international you're gonna you're gonna worry about that uh, card back or that figure coming all that way and getting damaged if you see my videos on youtube you'll have seen me kicking off about the made in figure that i got that was just in a box no packaging no and anything just in a box it actually came opened the box was open when it came through the door and the bubble was crushed and i didn't pay a lot for it but uh, it doesn't matter you don't want to get these bubbles crushed you want to keep them nice as they are but then again i got um if you saw one of my other videos where i got the best bin guard um it was in immaculate condition and the packaging was some of the best packaging that i have ever seen I, i've actually done a video on how to pack a vintage figure but i think i don't they even bet my my package <laughs> to be honest with you he's taking his time and you're not always going to get that unfortunately but uh, i did message him and thanked him very much for it but of course you can also search ebay in your local area and leading on from that there's also gumtree which you look you're looking in your local area basically i mean you can look nationwide but you it is the same company it's just the same company as ebay but you're going to be looking local for something like that again um you're going to have to go go pick it up mostly maybe they'll deliver it for you but it's better if you get uh, something vintage like in, in a box store or uh, a carded figure that it's going to get delivered and you know it's going to be okay 
But also the cons on that is uh, you're going to have somebody come to your house and you don't really know who they are. Um, it can lead to problems. There is a lot of scamming going on on Gumtree. And just be careful of that. And people wanting you to send through PayPal when it's just best to do it with cash if possible. Again, similar to uh, Gumtree, you've got your Facebook marketplace. Now again, this, as I say, same as uh, Gumtree. It's, it's a bit better actually. You do get uh, more people in the local area looking at it because that's a nine percent of people are on Facebook. I'm not. I don't use Facebook, but um, it is an invaluable service which they added a, f a couple of years back. But again, you do get your idiots as you do on Gumtree. Also, speaking of Facebook, is the Facebook groups. Now, this is one of the best places to not just learn, but build a big collection. And I mean big because it does get a bit addictive. Um, you're watching these groups all the time. Echo Base is the best one to go for. But there's Jabba's Court. There's, there's no, numerous ones out there. Um, Echo Base, <laughs> you've got to be very quick. I mean, if there's something as well, because uh, if there's something decent, people are just watching it all the time. And you've got to get your yes please in very, very quickly. I suppose the cons with those groups as well are they're very knowledgeable collectors. They're a bit wary of newbies, and I don't know if Echo Base are taking on new members at the moment. I know it's been pretty full. Uh, they're not very tolerant of people asking silly questions, which is a bit of a shame because we need more collectors in this uh, this hobby. This is the whole point of this podcast is to get new people to start collecting Star Wars again. So if you've got a silly question, just ask me. BlueHarvestToys at gmail.com And I'm very patient. The next place you want to go to is car books and toy fairs. Toy fairs is a bit um, rare these days. There are a few still going about, but uh, not as many as uh, they used to be. And a lot of them are toy and train fairs where they've mainly got trains and not a lot of vintage Star Wars. You'll still find them out there, but the dealers will probably know what they've got. Um, not always, as I did find a um, pop-up lightsaber R2-D2 in a pound box in a toy fair. Car boats, however, you're going to find a lot of bargains out there. But you're going to have to get there early, unfortunately, because uh, the collectors do get in there very early and get it, look under the tables, into the boxes, they scavenge, <laughs> look, and they're asking... Where, where the vintage is, if they've got any Star Wars, anything like that. So you need to get up very early in the morning. Next up, we have antique shops and vintage toy shops. Now, vintage toy shops are few and far between in this country. You have your Leicester toy shop, your uh, Ford and Bridge, all the cool things. You've got your places in Blackpool. You've got, I think, for about four different places in one area in Blackpool, to be honest with you. You've got calendar, you've got places all over the country. There's one in Bridlington, there's a nice one in Filey. And if you're in the Yorkshire area, there's also my friend Gareth at Cosmic Toys. Yes, I called it correctly this time, Cosmic Toys. I always call it OK Comics, which is a comic shop in Leeds. You can always check these places out online. But it's always nice to get in these places and have a rummage around. But with your antique stores, they're all over the country. It's, thousands of them all over the country you never know where they are because they never get listed there are uh, there are places where they do list them but um again you need to google these places half the time they're, they've been shut down for for months but just check them out online i can guarantee there'll be two or three antique places in your local area that you don't know nothing about they're not always going to have Star Wars or vintage or anything like that. And if they, even if they do have Star Wars, it's going to be something modern and way above its valuation. But you never know. Just get out there and have a look. Vintage Star Wars does seem to be a bit frowned upon in the antiques trade, which leads me on to the last place I'm going to mention today. As you know, I work for Hanson's Auction House in Derby, and I'm the Star Wars toy expert. 
Uh, we had a lady coming down this week from Glasgow, all the way from Glasgow to Derby. Uh, she was refused in a local auction house as they deemed it below what they usually sell. And they turned this poor lady away. Obviously, we don't turn people away. We are wanting to be uh, as good as Vectis as regard to uh, selling vintage Star Wars, selling vintage toys. Charles Hansen himself is very aware of the value of vintage toys. He's uh, at the forefront of uh, template toys, vintage toys, and now he's got me on board to be uh, the Star Wars expert. He's realised that Star Wars toys are very, very valuable. So this lady came in with boxes and boxes and boxes of vintage Star Wars toys from her youth, from the brothers, her and her brothers used to play. And she, she, I looked at the figures first and they were, they were mint figures. Even though she played with them, they were mint. And nearly all of them had the blasters and the weapons and they were all complete. And as I say, she, she just kept bringing these boxes out and they were just boxed vehicles, play sets, some things I'd never seen before. Um, but nothing really special, but uh, nothing really very valuable. But there was Kenny Canada things, and there was a Harbert card back. There was lots of card backs and die casts and all sorts. But unfortunately, she wanted to sell them straight away, and they're going to go and be sold on the 22nd of October. So if you're interested in anything like that, head to hansons.co.uk and register on there, and you can bid on those items on Hansons Live. It would have been nice to have that collection in our December Star Wars sale. But that's entirely up to her. It's her that's selling them. She wants the money. More or less straight away. I did value uh, the job lot. There was 19 lots in all for around about £2,000. I'm sure she'll get a lot more than that. I think the figures themselves will go for at least £1,000, if not a lot more. But auction houses are one of the best places to find a bargain. They uh, sometimes go under the radar, like last week's auction we had. There was uh, quite a number of items that I didn't know about until I got there, and I checked them out, and there were some really interesting items. I did buy a carded Palatoy Snow Trooper for myself, which is absolutely mint, and I got it for a lot less than it's actually valued for. So auction houses are well worth checking out. Vectis is not going to go under the rad radar as much because everybody's watching Vectis because they are one of the, well, probably the top Star Wars auction house at the moment. So all collectors have eyes on them. It's well worth a look, though, because sometimes you do get a bag in there. But I'm trying to be totally transparent here. I do work for Hansons, and we do have... A lot of Star Wars coming in now. I am getting trying to get a lot of Star Wars in. So anybody out there that wants to sell their Star Wars and they want to get a good price, we are going to have a big push for this December auction. I'm trying to get some Palatoy employees to come along as well. Again, I'll keep you updated on what we do actually get into that auction and the auction that's coming up on the 22nd. So there you go. That's... Uh, my little guide on how to buy vintage Star Wars. I hope you find it very useful. You will take it all on board and go out and get yourself some nice vintage figures. If you do, let me know. I'd love to see what you do actually find out there. Uh, if you do find a nice uh, place where the do sell vintage Star Wars, let us know, because we'd all like to visit. Don't keep it to yourself. <laughs> so that just about wrap it up for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. it. Made a bit of a change. A bit of change in format doesn't uh, doesn't harm. If there's anything that you'd like me to talk about, just let me know. Again, blowharvesttoys at gmail.com. Also, any feedback for the show, good or bad, as long as it's constructive. So until next week, may the toys be with you. Just one more round, friend. Just one more song, friend, and then so long, friend, the nights get shorter, it seems, just one more rhyme.
crime friend, yes, it's a crime friend. But you know time, friend, time can fly. So it's good night, friend. Good night, but not goodbye.